we were going through the ANRP party in the office, and we are trying to read about what the party stands for, and we actually wrote in a few points. Right. Well, I'll allow my colleague from Youth Next to share ideas with you. Great, thanks. So my question is, why should we believe that you'll be able to achieve what other parties haven't been able to achieve? And technology, how will we reach out to the other people that don't have access to this technology? Because there's a lot of people in Nigeria that don't have access to technology. Right, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's not get uh, uh, have a phobia for the word technology. Technology is, can be simple. Mm -hmm. you understand? So when, what we're not saying we're going to deploy mm -hmm. high tech that people can understand, mm -hmm. but there are simple things that are available today. You can simplify it to the level of people at the grassroots to enhance and change their lives. It's about understanding their needs, understanding their wants, and now creating that little technological difference that will change their lives. Just like uh, uh, Mr. Adadu said when he was talking about the farmers, these are grassroots rural people, but they have a phone. So, so just through the text message that uh, they were able to ensure that they got fertilizers, they cut out the middle, and they got it at a reasonable price, and that increases considerably the produce because they were able to do more with the money they had when they had that they saved for cutting out the middleman. So we're talking about deploying technology as that when is needed, taking cognizance of the needs of the people. Again, let me quickly add that, um, you know, um, uh, some of the little, pro well, first of all, you know, we all, everybody knows that Nigeria cannot keep selling crude oil, right? And then you now wait and uh, say, oh, it's uh, $40 today. Oh, we can't pay salaries. It's, it's madness, absolute madness, right? So we all, everybody believes that, okay, if you must sell this crude oil, you've got to add value. Oh, we can't sell the crude oil. And then we import um, um, comp uh, uh, refined petroleum and diesel and all of that. And you can see where we are today. It's become a zero-sum game. Whether crude oil goes up, we can't sell, we can't, we, you know, we begin to have a problem at the pumps and people are agitating. If it goes down, we can't pay salaries. We even wonder, even when it goes up, even right now, they can't pay salaries and they can't even sell fuel to people. Our, our tech on technology, if we begin to talk now, we won't finish today. But we're also talking about the need for us to think for our universities to deploy and polytechnics and for us to begin to use what we learned in school. Un university of Ibado was founded in 1948 as university college. Till date. Till date, Nigeria cannot produce anything. What have we been studying and graduating with? What are our university students actually doing presently? We have a problem with the energy power sector, right? And what, what's our best solution? We go and import large power plants from abroad. And we're borrowing, we have, Nigeria has borrowed money into the future. If you talk to the Minister of Finance today, she tells you how they've borrowed money into 40 years. We don't have to pay the 40 years. The 40 years. So because of one critical thing, nobody is thinking about how we can think for ourselves and manufacture and create the things that are important for us. Simple thing like, Ghost workers. A report in 2015 said there were 140,000 ghost policemen in Nigeria. 140,000 ghost policemen. 2015, during the just after just about when Jonathan was going to leave. Go and Google it. All right, out of about 450,000. Now, in the civil service, the present government said they have found 50,000 ghost workers. Every government comes and tells you how they have caught ghost workers. The former government said they found 60,000 ghost workers. It is actually becoming impossible to eradicate ghost workers in Nigeria. An ordinary Excel package, well deployed, will fix this if they want to fix it. The point now is, by the time they have all these resources, every year, almost every ministry, department and agency, the budget billions for new software. I've never seen where you buy software every year. You can see the work that a place like Center for Social Justice under, under Asia, that, that they're collating a lot of these things, like Budge IT, the guys in Budge IT, collating, it's, it's, it's kind right. So if you ask me, how are we going to make a difference? See, I think the first thing to do is to try, right? I always say, if you're not at the races, you can't win if you don't show up. I can win, I can, I can run faster than Usain Bolt. 
with my big tummy. But the point is, of course, I could never, I could win him in a race. Maybe we are running and he's almost breasting the tape and he pulls a muscle, right? And I, 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 I clamber and, you know, win him. But if I did not show up at the race, how am I going to win him? You know, so the point is, if we want to make a difference, we have to first of all offer ourselves. Number two is going to be the, the, the cornucopia, the entire smorgasbord of ideas that we are trying to offer. That's how you can say, okay, you've gone to our website. Okay, I like this guy. This guy seems to be... Okay, no, this one is not too good. Then we're also open. So we're open. If you join us today, we have over 250 WhatsApp groups all over Nigeria. In fact, it's expanding every day, even in some local government, in some wards. The discussion is going on. It's not easy. That is the work that we're doing right now in creating our own platform. It's not easy. You're going to see some people come on the, on the WhatsApp group and say, what nonsense are you people discussing since yes, you know. Then the fights will happen. Then we will morph and we will numb and we will calm people down and talk something reasonable and keep moving on. It's not easy. But um, I believe that, that we are meant, we are first in many things. We're, we're the first party in Nigeria that would have the numbers being shown openly, verifiable, base, database. We can print it for you in five minutes if you want, right? I can show it to you in one minute if you want to see it. Number two, we are the first party with an app in Nigeria. We are the first party with these numbers of discussion on WhatsApp going on, on Telegram in this country. We are the first party that's given any accountability around party finances in this country. We're the first party in this country. By the time we were, we were registered and given, we were 27,000 numbers. Let me tell you how the open parties in Nigeria, a few guys would conspire together and say, well, let's go and open this party. And it's okay, let's go. Then they will now go and get the group, put INEC under pressure and obtain the certificate and come and say, we have this certificate, come and join us. No, that's what we would do. We were together pursuing the certificate with 27,000 people. Okay, pursuing this certificate. So by the time when we ask, so who's your who's your who's your partner member? We have twenty-seven thousand plus partner members. Who is the big man behind you? There's no big man. These are the people. Well, some of them are big men anyway, in their own right. But these are the gentlemen and ladies involved, you know. And there isn't more to this. And so I believe strongly that we can make that difference. How do we intend, for instance, to solve the problem of mass poverty? You know, in Nigeria, because APC also wrote out to, uh, to, uh, on the similar book that we had to solve mass poverty rather than solving it, they created much more embarrassing, mm. you know, you know, phenomena. So I think one of the things we need to look into, look into now is that how do we intend to solve the problem of uh, mass poverty? And uh, another thing, you know, you made mention of, you know, is, is the question of what you said uh, uh, you, are, you are trying to look at the policies of Nigeria. And I don't think, I don't think. You give us the policy upon which ANR mm. is supposed to be built on. You know, uh, a specific ones were precise. Because currently now Nigeria is Nigeria's economic policy is majorly structured on generally neoliberalism, it's killing our oil exactly. industry. It's neoliberalism, mm -hmm. killing our oil industry, killing our education sector and virtually every other sector. Mm -hmm. Neoliberalism wrecked Greece. Exactly. Even Financial Times June 2016 admitted that neoliberalism in the past few months you know, had created more problems than uh, than solution. And of course, you are quite enthusiastic in making a position that we need to then how other, others are doing for more, in other countries, how they are, they are solving their problems in quotes, you know, in other countries. And I say that in Nigeria, probably one of our problems is that we have learned too much, way and way too much mm. from what other countries are doing. I mean, we learned from them SAP. And we have not really gotten out of the problems created mm. by SAP, the structure, the mm. structure. We didn't learn SAP; it was foisted. Yeah. And yeah. It's, uh, mm. it, through, our, through our leaders, actually. Mm -hmm. So we didn't accept Nigerians resisted it, but our leaders imposed it nevertheless. Mm -hmm. So we, so and uh, so we learned, we learned SAP from there. We took it from the West. Even our legal system, we are still battling with uh, with the with, with the fact that we learned. The current structure of our legal system, but we are still wearing that wig yeah. and all of those other you know, nonsenses. You know, and which, which means that there, there is really a need for us as Nigerians to develop a genuine economic model you know, that can carry along even the most disadvantaged section of the population. And whatsoever economic model we intend to build, in which really we need to spell it out. Mm -hmm. You know, and not hide, uh, and not hide it under any victims. 
You know, we need to spell it out. Whatsoever, whatsoever economic model that still has a thing of neoliberalism, I think it's not something that can, under no condition, work for uh, for Nigeria. Mm. You know, and uh, you know, you to, you also I, you you also talked about the question of uh, technology. Mm. Uh, personally, I don't really think I get the context with which you are using this technology. No, probably, it's, probably, I don't know, probably you are, you are saying, okay, you are using this technology as a means of, uh, as a way in which, okay, as one of the major uh, way to build upon, as a major way to build our industry. Let me put it this way. I don't know if you, are, if, you are, if you intend to use technology to anchor it upon economic development, that do, which, will, which will mean that, okay, Nigeria would want, would also join join the committee of nations that are that are, that are also going to be technology technology producing industry, or probably you just intend to use Western yeah. technology, nope. you know, I, to I, connect I our, that, our yeah. to mm. connect our respective system. Yeah, you know, but uh, whichever one we intend to do is fine. But I think what is primary is to ensure that even Nigeria as it is, we need to go beyond discussing that discussing the question of making making bagels and pencils in 2019. Mm. You know, it's quite uh, it's quite absurd. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to answer some of those. I think you started from uh, from uh, first of all, you started from the um, ideology. Again, you know, sometimes um, you know, this what they call cognitive dissonance in terms of the different kind of cognitive dissonances, and one of it is that sometimes we want to get the full picture of something, boom, like that. Um, it's not everything that can be explained in a four-minute elevator pitch, right? As a matter of fact, ANRP is a university on its own. Uh, there's so much information to consume, absorb, refine, uh, that the only way you practice one, we, we, it's difficult to say everybody in ANRP has a total picture. Even I, as a national chairman by God's grace, I still, I learn every day. And sometimes some people challenge the positions that I've held. And they say, no, that isn't that's okay, 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 I think... Uh, like I've been Toffler said, you know, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So when we say pragmatic, uh, uh, constructive pragmatism, we cannot say constructive and positive pragmatism. People like to hear ism, ism when they're talking about ideology. But people's mind seems to be locked into socialism, liberalism, neoliberalism, neo-socialism, capitalism, neo-capitalism. We said we don't want to do with any of these words. And I explained very clearly, you know, when I was discussing this, I said, guys, the United States, nobody goes to bed hungry if you don't want to. Because if you are down on your luck, except you want to sleep outside, there are many homeless people, a lot of them are on drugs as well. But why is it that as a capitalist country, selling neoliberalism, the Chicago School of Thought, the, the Freemanians, I'm an economist too, right? In spite of that, they realize that there are some of their, the, the, you know, the members of their society who will not be able to compete like the rest of the people. And they said, listen, rather than leave these people to be on their own, let us make a provision for them. They call it elite consensus. The big men come together and say, listen, if we want to enjoy this our wealth, we need to do something about these people. We don't have any of such in Nigeria. And everywhere in the world, I mean, when you go to in the Scandinavians, for example, you will see a lot of that. They call them uh, social democrats, most of them. Norway, Finland, you know. The focus in those places is on our people happy. They, they mention happiness. That's it. You know. So please, our, our ideology is very clear, but it's very complicated. You've got to sit down and think about it, all right? It's not about sending high valuing words. The subject of technology should be thrown back to the youth. For them to say, for you to enjoy every technological improvement, every new app that comes, every new gadget. And let me tell you, when you and youth, we use more gadgets than the youth of elsewhere. People who have no jobs are carrying iPhone 7, iPhone 8. What's thousands of dollars? And it's nothing to them. They have two or three. It's the time for Nigerian youth to run and to think and run around the subject of this technology and the fact that the world has left your crude, it is our crude thing. We want to manufacture, I mean, to, to grow yams. It takes nine months for yam to germinate, to, to, to mature. Just how many 
shiploads of yam do you need to buy one Toyota Prado? And Toyota Prado will probably sell for about 50 million today. Each tuba of yam, if you want to sell it on the streets today, I think I still bought some a couple of days back on my way back home on those days, was 200 naira, 250. Now, divide 50 million by 250, and it will tell you how many tubas of yam you need. Now, we're sending someone to the village to go and farm. In order to grow that, those yams for one year, his life depends on it. To bring it to town when there's going to be a glut. Even the equipments that we use, like grinders and all of that, that we use to process our food, we have to buy from abroad because, listen, the old grinding machine that they used to grind pepper since I was growing up more than 40 years ago, it's still the same thing. Nobody has innovated anything. The next innovation we need as a people is going to have to come from abroad. We are living on borrowed time. That's the reason why we're taking this risk to fund this party and say, listen, we know that we're living on borrowed time. And not only that, we're digging. Say, so when you're in a hole, stop digging. Not Nigeria. In the budget for this year, 2018, there's a provision of more than 400 billion naira to buy new cars just to make the people who lead you comfortable, whether the politician or the top civil servant. Just new cars between... Um, there's this van that they like to buy. The, the, they're even specifying they want Prado, they want they want Land Cruiser. We, we can't produce even the tire. There used to be Dunlop and Michelin in this country. Now they are gone. There are more than 100, 100 great inventions that were started in the university. Our professors are teaching things that have expired. And sometimes I begin to think that the problem with Nigeria actually is inside embedded in the academia to teach expired knowledge and keep recirculating that and to ensure that they don't actually impact on the on the larger society. So I'll leave it at that. Yeah, accept my let me, let me Thank you so much. If you continue to listen to you, you will not leave your it will be a video tonight. No, but really this let issue me, of technology is yes. really, yeah, it's really, it's really very good. Sorry, yeah. Ogashi, you know, it's really, really see, listen. Take technology, take it into information dissemination. Take technology, take it into fraud prevention and fraud, fraud detection, into forensics. Take technology and take it into production of the things that we need as a people. Take technology, take it into communication. Where can you not deploy it? Right. However, we're not talking about the arcaneness. Like, oh, it's arcane. Oh, we're not talking about it's not about going to buy some app from, from abroad. It's about thinking through the so process. Thank you so much. I just wanted to add something. You said that. Uh, in other countries, they're already considering elite consensus. Where They've the done that a long time yes, ago. Yes, the happiness of others. Absolutely. Is what is. We are also there. In Nemo State, somebody just whispered to me that we are Ministry of Happiness. Of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> and that brings me to the lecturer in the house, because you also criticize professors that they are teaching Oh, yes, theories. he's my friend. <laughs> uh, uh, lecturer, Mr. Modi, what would you want that the government does so that, you know, the academia can produce something that can, you know, push us forward technologically. Well, thank you very much. Uh, it's been interesting watching and hearing from you guys. Uh, first, I want to commend uh, ENLP because it's quite not easy. I'm sure the, the movement or the party was formed to solve a problem. Uh, now, I want us to be pragmatic because you mentioned that the ideology of your party is constructive pragmatism. And of, how do you think ENRP can succeed in Nigeria's political system and not die off because the country is replaced with so much uh, information concerning different political parties that have come on board, right? But before you know it, they, they fizzle out. Now that brings me to what you think or what ENRP has been doing to ensure that ideologically minded parties come together because I'm sure that Nigeria has over 50 political parties which of course more than half of them we have more or less maybe the same ideology so how do you want Modi Olagu now to be a part of ENRP and probably Mr. Etu if he was not a member of ENRP to also become a part of ENRP when he sees another party right that is more or less like the same thing. So what are you doing in that light? Because I, I believe there has to be a coalition, right? For us to wrestle power, if you can use that word, 
from the hands of these guys that we know that they've won this country around. And lastly, because I'm from the academia, I want to hear from you what your thoughts are on education, right? What does ANRP, how does ANRP perceive education, right? What is the place of public institutions in Nigeria? In how does ANRP see public in, uh, institutions, public education, right? What does ANRP uh, have in store for Nigerians, right? Even before getting to power. Let me quickly, let me quickly shoot a bit. Um, number one is to say that when you say, what are we doing in terms of uh, collaborating because some other, there cannot be any other party like ANRP, not for now, I'm sorry. You know, we're not being arrogant, right? This is very organic, right? Um, you know, I'm in touch with all the other parties. I mean, we were in some meetings yesterday and day before. The truth is, none of them can actually stand up and give you this array of kind of people, young people. The, the understanding of a political party in Nigeria is this old man who has been there, done that. Where's this big Agbada and come and say, yeah, my children. No, no, come on. None of them will give you the level of elocution that we're giving you here today. And of course, I know that they are talking to other people, so they're going to bring people here. They're going to sound them out. People are playing games with the thing. We didn't, we didn't set up a party just because we wanted to be relevant or we're looking for money from someone. As at the last count, more, I've seen more than 100 or 200 people who want to be president in Nigeria. They want to be president. They're not ready to build any structure. No, not for them to do the dirty work. Go look for people. Bring them together. Manage them. Sell an idea to them. Sell an ideology to them. Create an institution. No, not for them. Everybody wants to be... Everybody is a superstar. ANRP is not built after any superstar. All of us are superstars. And anybody can do the job, right? And that's the kind of thing that we're trying to. So, again, as of now, we're not focused on that presidency. Right now, we're even working on councillorship. We are, we're sponsoring all our councillors. We say, okay, guys, at that level, we can't be bothering you, go and bring this uh, nomination fee. But data is our currency, right? So what we want you to do as a, as a councillor, Say, so listen, we just need 1,000 people from you. You have to go back to your village or your ward or wherever it is you live, where you want to contest, and start talking to your people that you know. And they're going to say, okay, they, yeah, they'll give them this form, 20 people per page. They put their name down. People who support you. Modi Olaguru wants to go for councillor of social so ward. Oh, great. Ah, okay, Modi, ever look. They will sign and say they like you to go. You see, I was shocked when we thought about the idea. Because this is exactly what they do in the United States of America, where this democracy came from. It's called signing a petition. Yeah. Right? So if you want to contest, even under a party, they say, go and sign a petition. Why do they do that? Because no party wants to feel someone who is unpopular, unknown, an unknown quantity, unpopular. Maybe he's even a fraudster, where he says he wants, and they know him to be a fraudster. Nobody will support him. So by the time, that's, why, that's the first level of filtering out people. And whether you're a councillor, you want to go for councillor, local government chairman, house of assembly, house of rep, senate, governor, president in our party, you will bring this petition. Only that the numbers will increase. If you are taking 1,000 from councillor, for local government chairman, you look for 4,000. You want to be a state governor, no problem. Bring 20,000. You want to be sure that you've gone to all the local government under you. All the things they do, they say it in their mansions in the state capital. The next thing they come to Abuja, the next thing you... Everybody is going around the world. Today they're in China, tomorrow they're in Singapore. Who is looking for Nigerians anywhere in the world? They have refused. <laughs> we have, they have refused to sit down and solve our problem as a country. So, so that's that. In terms of education, listen, well, my own idea is a bit out of the box. Public education was deliberately whittled 15 million children out of school in Nigeria, the highest number in the world. Listen, let's be asking ourselves. How did we plow the, level, the, the depth of ignominy as a nation? How come we have more out-of-school children than India or China, where there are billions of people living? 15 million children wake up in this country, in the north and south, east and west, no schooling. And you don't know that with 15 million people, uh, children out of school, you have already mortgaged the next 100 years of your, of your life as a country. You mortgage, you forget it. Currently, we have a skill acquisition like academy where we are already you know developing frameworks to teach to, to, to you know um empower people the 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 parties we have presently in nigeria right there's a mass of voters that 
eludes us. What do I mean by this? I work in a university, right? And, well, it should not be surprising to learn that 90% of students don't care about all these things. We're going to make them care. So, well, you know, we're in that space. I've been to Unilag before. <laughs> oh, I, as a matter of fact, we're the only party in that <laughs> university <laughs> space. I've been to more than 15, I mean, 20 of them, and it's continuing, that's actually. Right. That's but not only universities, though, before you university guys start to feel cool. Mm. Polytechnics, colleges, all those places, yeah. we have adults mm. there. Mm. You know, in this country, um, first, we are, we are very good in critiquing, yeah? And some of us came together and said, look, this has to stop. For as a matter of fact, ANRP is not about winning elections mm. at all. Yeah. Okay, that will come, no doubt. But we need to change people's mindsets. The app, when I was discussing with uh, you, when I came in, you know, we keep complaining. We keep complaining. These guys are this, these guys are human beings will do what they can get away with. These guys put us in this hole because they are getting away with it. And unless and until we participate, I've had this campaign of go and get your PVC, uh, go and vote. It doesn't matter. If you don't belong to a political party to influence that process where they produce the candidates. Mm. So if a political party gives you, you know, some sort of, I mean, uh, kleptomania, mm. that's, the op that's the option we are limited to. Mm. We plan to have an ANRP institute where Things, we're going to start with ourselves. Out of the 15 million plus votes Buhari got in the last election, 7 million came from the Northwest. I don't like losing. And I, that's because I found out I've lost elections before in school. And what that has taught me is no matter the English you can speak, I was the best candidate during the election campaign for the manifesto for the overall because the first time I won was as uh, we are a multi-campus system, as a uh, satellite campus. But when I wanted to contest for the overall, I was the best manifesto giver. But yet I lost face flat. And the person who won, his administration led to the removal of over 2,000 students who lost their admission because the government wasn't able to do what it needs to do right. So how do you intend to win? Because what I see, the reason why I have not been able to join ERRP or many I've told you behind the scene before we started, is capacity is what I've not seen beyond the English. Everyone can talk about economics and the rest. Capacity to win. If most of these parties, our activities, our awards, all the people we carry out, we have town hall meeting with most of the time, are people down south who can easily understand our English. But the Almagiris, where the seven million votes will come from, in the northeast, in the northwest, are not talked to. Aren't we in a kind of way weakening uh, the strength of those who would have won and oust those we are complaining about now? I have only been seeing ANRP on WhatsApp, okay. on Facebook. I know your party secretariat in Abuja, it's the outskirts of town. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, oh my God. how do you want to move closer to those okay. who will bring out the guns that day? No, we don't do guns. <laughs> you don't right? need to do guns, no, no, listen. We don't, we don't do you guns. don't need to do guns. Right, we don't, but how do you move closer we'll, to we'll make sure you, that they, we'll do, they okay, don't do okay. those guns? They don't do those guns to affect you. Don't worry about that. Thousand traders in Kuto Market, for example, in Ogun State, is only maybe 17, 18 people that will represent them. But those 17 will shape where Kuto's vote is going, where uh, Ojale in Ijebode is going where Omida market is going, where even uh, the Ikeja market here is going, how can we be seen to be moving close? It's not... 
Okay, I've been very impressed with what I've heard about ANRP. I've been looking for a party to join because I want to go into elective position yeah. in Beautiful. the political arena of Nigeria. Beautiful. But basically, a quick follow-up and a quick comment. No. Non-distance with you. Non-distance <laughs> A quick comment to my colleagues' um, um, questions and in the line of thoughts. Olungwenga, we have to stop criticizing. We have to stop the critic. It's the real fact. We need to get involved. The questions I would be asking is, I'm tired of the old uh, grammar. I'm, I'm, I'm a practical person. What are the physical strategies in place to mobilize thoughts at the garage? What are the strategies in place to be able to galvanize women who are in families. Women determine a lot in the family. Mm -hmm. Women determine what happens to their son, who they should listen to. Yeah. What are your physical strategies? What are the things you have on ground to get these people involved? Let's talk practical. Let's leave mm. the old grammar, English, and everything. Let me give you. We have to be very practical. Let How me... much do you embrace women in your party? Ah. Let me... No, really, I've not heard anything about the gender issues. Are you a gender? Are you a gender-friendly party? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, yeah, really. Let me, let me let's, let's, so let's talk practical. Yeah, That's all I have to say. But please, um, Oluk Benga, I feel your point, but we yeah. need to get involved. Let yeah. me give you an instance. I mean, the last 10 years, I have... Uh, I mean, I, I left banking, and I went to, to do business at, at the base of the pyramid. So I realized that, look, uh, if you really want to have this mass number, like you rightly said, you need to be able to release with these guys at the base of the pyramid. Okay, so good enough, I went into microfinance 10 years ago. So that brought my life from the big banking hall type to the rural communities. Right now in Kogi State. You see, I think one of the shock, one of the surprises that we're going to give to Nigerians is for them to be assuming that we're a Facebook party. And we speak. <laughs> and we just, I mean, right now as I speak to you, we have 21 local governments in Kogi states. And this party is represented in the 21 local governments. We have local government coordinators in 21. We have a party secretariat already, we have, you know, um, finalized. And we're already talking about party offices in the 21 local governments. I mean, there's hardly um, any of those words that I don't have a number of somebody that I can call in Kogi states. So I can tell you in 36 states of the nation, plus the FCT, there are footprints of ANRP yes. everywhere. Mm. Let this party be, be depersonalized. Yeah. So anytime Tope Fashua is indisposed, ah. the party will not be in coma. Mm. Anytime Etu Muhammad is having birthday bash with some babe somewhere, then there will now be a kind of, uh, you know, a momentary you know, technological comatose of ANRP. <laughs> because every Facebook update that I see emanates from him. Joseph Stanley had Nigeria in mind when he said he would cast the vote, decides nothing, but he would can't the vote. <laughs> For goodness sake, he's a Russian. But I, I think he had Nigeria in mind. Yeah. You need to look into that. I have no question to ask him. You I, see, I want to submit by saying if you want Yurin to form, you concentrate it on, on one spot. spot. Yeah. It will, it's inevitable to it's form. Yeah. Just continue. It would happen. Mm. Don't chicken out. Mm. They, it will, they, they've not started doing politics with you. They will come very soon. They will come very soon. But you will, you will weather the storm. Mm. I'm a full honey ex man by nature. I have a ranch. Wow. So I did in cows. Amazing. I've been to all these zona parts. You know, not east, not west, not everywhere. So I have been, I've been closer to people. So don't believe Buddha have a majority in the southwest or south south. We have mm. people are hungry. Mm. I'm one of them. We are one of them. I graduated 2012. No job. I have to sit myself and like, what can I do? Okay, let me start a young car. Two cows, three. The issue there is it's not about going to school, asking students this and that. You need to go to the to the streets. We have the car riders. It's out. If a government comes in and I'll tell you guys, we don't want to see you guys on the, on the street again. Do you have anything to sustain yourself? Is there any other, any other alternative? Okay, can I answer as, as many as I can? Gender, uh, I'll throw the question back to you because 
you know, where like he's like he said, ANRP is the easiest party to join in Nigeria. That's right. Why is that so? Uh, many people didn't ask. If you wanted to join APC or PDP today, you have to go and get a letter from your local government chairman. Mm. Go back to your ward, your ballet to introduce you. Mm. Then you travel back to God yeah. knows where. You don't know. Yeah. You think it's easy? <laughs> you know. So uh, you know. So that's that's the scenario. You'll be shocked that you have to go through that rigmarole. Uh, now we say, listen, go online, click, 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 put some information, carry go. All right. We say, okay, please. Um, if you if you have a job, if you have a job, right? If you have a job, or you have a business. Give us five thousand naira. Give yourself five thousand naira every year. All right. If you have more, please help the party. You know. So we've made it easy, but sometimes you know, human beings we don't like easy things. You know. So that's um, that's uh, something. Now, however, for the ladies, if you went on a, okay, you may not be able to see that. We sit in the back end. Uh, out of thirty-three thousand members, about six thousand of them are women. Now, the point is that women don't step out quickly, you know, they don't step out quickly. But the moment they step out, you have to recognize them. I, for one, uh, I'm going to write an article tonight about a different thing. But one of the things I jotted down in writing that is that there are two, the two biggest lies in the world. Number one, opportunity comes but once. No, the problem is that many times opportunity comes, people, they're shielded as challenges. People don't know. Take it. Right? For example, there was an opportunity for us to start December 2016. We grabbed it. Mm. The opportunity is every day. Who is doing anything about it? Number two, the biggest lie, it says that women are the weaker sex. No, women are the stronger sex. Mm. We've been pondering this thing for too long, you know? No, by all means. So that tells you the level at which we, we the esteem at which we hold women and their capacity, in our own view, for women to actually cause uh, a renewal, a rev an intellectual revolution in, in this country. We don't have a woman's wingo in ANRP. There's no women's wingo. There's no youth wing in ANRP. Youth, so women no, get involved. The women's, youth, women's wing and youth wing is something, a device by which they gather people and put them in one corner. Hey, find a leader, youth leader. Yeah. Take five million, go and say to your people, let, let us so that we can talk. <laughs> then they have those meetings in the middle of the night. We don't do night meetings in the NRP. We do it in broad daylight. We're not, we're not arm robbers, right? So we do it in broad daylight because night meeting is used to keep women out. Mm. For those who are married, you have to go back to your home. Your husband will not be, you not find it likely if you are outside at 11 p.m. in the night. Doing what? Is he talking about this Nigeria? How to make it better? Why do you have to do it in the darkness? I don't understand, you know? So, so that's that, you know? So please, it's awful. See, ONRP is an open system. Let me tell you what we, if I were the only party, apart from APC PDP, we made a bold move. We said we're going to have our next Congress, which is coming up February 17, 2018, uh, on the Saturday, February 17, in, in, in Eagle Square. Eagle Square. In a, we will be the only party that has ever dared to have a Congress in Eagle Square. Number one, you can't have an Eagle Square something when there are only 15 of you in your party. It's because we have that 33,000. So even if we had 2,000 of them or so, or 2,500 of them, you know, mobilize them, let them come. People who can, you know, try and sponsor themselves. Someone, some people have been saying things about, we don't have office here. Remember, I don't know how I can tell you again. We have, we have not been in government. We haven't stolen money. People are sacrificing, you know. We have ex -cos. We haven't paid anybody one naira. We don't have one naira to pay anybody except the one we take from you. Right? It is not easy to build anything, you know. The people who you are hailing, the difference is this. Someone goes to the village, starts giving you 2,000 naira, gari, 2,000 naira, and granot. Say, ah, man, that man is a nice man. It's not general. It's your money he's spending, right? So he spends you 2,000 naira, or he goes and gets, for each of you, he usurps 200,000 from your life. And mentioned the thing about Nigeria's budget the other time. At... 23 million 23 billion dollars the average spend per nigerian okay in a year divide that 23 billion by 180 million nigerians nigeria's federal government is spending about 120 dollars on your life in a year 
When I did the analysis in South Africa, the federal government of South Africa is spending $1,990 on each person. We're not talking about the government of Johannesburg or Cape Coast or whatever it is, Cape Town, whatever. Right? South Africa, $1,900. Algeria, $1,800. Ghana, $520 per person. Egypt, $547. Uh, as of last year, Kenya, $450. Nigeria is spending $100. Wow, wow. Now, if you divide that $110 per day, they're spending like, that is what is called poverty. Yeah. The whole of Nigeria is poor. Yeah. Not because we're supposed to be poor, because a lot of, now, mind you, when we talk about like Angola, I mentioned Angola the other time, $58 billion for this year. Dollar is dollar anywhere. If you want to stretch it as an economy, talk about purchasing power parity. Mm. Angola is a bit more expensive than Nigeria to live in. Even at that discounted fifty-eight billion dollars in Angola is about is about is about fifty-two billion dollars in Nigeria. So if you want to use fifty-two billion, why would Angola have a bigger budget than Nigeria? Why would Angola spend one thousand five hundred dollars per person? In, you know, huh? so so that is the definition of poverty. That's what you can see, right? Now the point is also that this figure, when you talk about this budget figure, it is driven by revenue. This year, 2018, that same Angola proposes to balance its budget, meaning that it wants to get as much revenue as the expenditure. So if they're getting $58 billion, they want to also get $58 billion in revenues from their system. The $23 billion Nigeria wants to spend. We intend to borrow at 40%, almost 40% of it from abroad. I mean, I've never seen a definition of wickedness that's more apt than this. And I'm saying that the leaders of Nigeria today are very wicked to, this, to the children and unborn children of this country and also pretty, pretty irresponsible, I must say. So, Oga, we don't have the money. You feel so bad about it? Join us. Yes. The 2,000 that you can give us, add it. Watch how far we can go. We may not be building brick and mortar. We're talking about, we're talking about changing the game. You're still thinking in terms of the old stuff. When Uber came to Nigeria, go to the airport there, they started beating them up. So you can't beat up technology. I take a cab from the airport to VI for 2,500 Naira. You are there, you say your association of Kinikon Trati driver. And 6,000 Naira, you want to take from me. So when those guys came, it was powered by the same technology thing. Everybody uses them now. Why would the African, how long do we think we can wait doing things the same way when the rest of the world they say eh, any person any organization indeed any living thing whose rate of change is less than or equal to the rate of change in the in your environment you are becoming a dinosaur if your if your rate if you're changing at the same time as your environment is changing you're becoming a dinosaur if you're changing slower than your environment is changing remember that frog thing you drop a frog in, a, in cold water, water. you start. Yeah, it, it didn't change, you know, in time with its environment. It gets cooked, right? It's, okay, it's just warm. Well, before you know it, it becomes it gets to boil. And you can't jump out of the water again. Our challenge in Nigeria is not with ourselves. Our challenge is what is going on in the rest of the world. If, if, if Our defi definition of politics has to go beyond the brick and mortar, the rice you give. The, this thing that you give. Now, we know we can't play the game. Let's not deceive ourselves. We cannot play that money for money game. Oh. But we're going to try. How much resource do we have open available to us? That's one. Number two, strategy. It's an open money. system. Challenge it. So why are we being this way? What we can't do, we can't play the old politics. We want to win. Who says we don't want to win? But listen, we're interested in building the structure. And I could see, take you through it. I'll take you through the, 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 the idea now. There are more than up to 10,000 words in Nigeria. Almost 10,000 words in Nigeria. All right? In order to win an election as a president in Nigeria, you don't need 17 million votes. Give it 10 million votes. Buhari got 15 million votes, right? Good luck got 12 million votes. The next party, which is the next party, do you know? Give yourself a chance. It's called APA. They scored about 51,000 votes. And then it went down, down. Some people even say that it's the a people who are looking for APC, they didn't know that they all put their finger. And it happened to be counted for APA, yeah? So we're here to redefine all of that. The truth is also that many of the so-called votes, we can't compete on those votes. In a scenario where people just write the results, 
But you can see that even INEC is trying to reshape itself. Yeah. Talking about, oh, yeah, something will be electronically transmitted. Yeah. This and that. They are putting under pressure. If people like you don't speak up, how will they change? If people like you would only say and criticize and say, you people can't get here, you will just win. No, it's not about part of the strategy of winning is to criticize and critique, mind you, to critique the present scenario and the present logistics, the present you know, system of collation and voting, because you're thinking about, you have an end in mind to say, okay, this is where we're going into. The best thing, listen, if, for example, we can get corporate Nigeria, people who have jobs, whether you work in advertising or in a bank or in a telecoms firm, and, and you see, oh, man, these guys, they don't look bad, though. They seem like I can relate with them. If you know how many calls I take every day, and my phone number is everywhere, right? Are you ready to do that work or you want to like, you know, just observe from afar and critique them about how they're not doing the right thing? So we are building, we want to win. Hmm? We want to win, we don't exist. And see that thing that you have, the one you mocked about our office on, that place is called Sabolube in Abuja. Do you know that we're actually positioned for Twitter sleep? That the entire villages along that stretch, even some of them, the chief, the son of the Esu of that the chief of those places, is contesting for councillor on our platform already. All right, we positioned as the party they identify with. It was like a stroke of genius. Even when the president is going into the country or coming out to the airport, he sees us. Who is these people? NRP, NRP, NRP. You don't want that. It was a fortuitous stroke of genius. Jelly that we are, we are the best. Look, where's PDP office in Abuja? Yeah. Do you know where it's called Watata House? In Zone 5. Before you get to Zone 5, the traffic. How many people have passed through Watata House? Yeah. Yeah. You will sweat. Yeah. But you must go. Everybody. People are passing that place. Some people call me. They are almost weeping on phone. Oh, I saw our party. Some people that we didn't know before have joined us. And you can look at that design, it's clear, it's bold. I, we went for the biggest kind of design, nine by five. They don't usually do it for people. Okay, it's bold. If you are going there, you get the message. What is the rider under that thing? We say, drive safely. Eh? My brother, forget the money, forget all those power, forget those guns. <laughs> Think about the brain. If you believe in the power of the brain, look around us here, nothing. Nothing was built with myth or superstition or violence or even money. Everything around us, including the clothes you are wearing, is a product of thinking. And that's what ANRP is about. Thank you very much.